Hello. Hi there. How are we doing this evening? Um, yeah. Sorry, I went live quicker. Normally there's more of a delay, so it caught me out. Let me know how the um, uh, how the sound levels are because uh, I believe my children came in and messed with my um, my microphone. Stream Elements is here. Who else is here? Say hi in the chat so I can say hi back. Hey, it's Ida. I think so. How are you doing, hun? Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I always worry. Last thing I want is to blast anyone's head off if they're listening to me with their uh, earphones in. Um... Sorry, I am still just making sure I'm all set up, really. Um, we all made it to Friday. We all made it to Friday, everyone. How did that happen? This week has been a week, hasn't it? Do you know, today, a lot of people have been struggling, and I just wanted let's put our hearts up for everyone in the community because everyone is struggling right now um and we should show some love we should absolutely show some love to each other um we've got temp here hi temp it is really nice to see you hi rick lovely to have you along um i i love it when you pop in temp even if it's just to say hi and then you go off and do other things, uh, I I just appreciate people popping in, really. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's get started, shall we? So Rick responded to my community tab question, which was, um, do you know what the CSI effect is? Um, uh, because this this has come up a little bit with this whole um, uh, Howerman Gilgo Beach suspect arrest, um, and I wanted like really what I want to do is get into the profile of someone like that. But these things keep coming up, and I think it's important to to kind of combat stuff. So the CSI effect is where. Because we live in in a world where everything's at our fingertips. We've got a, a computer in our hands that can access information straight away. And we have things like Netflix and other streaming services where we can binge watch something and we, we get to the end. We get that fast resolution, whether it's um, a complete made-up fan fantasy program or film or whether it's you know a, a true crime documentary we get to the answer um and it leads people to think that forensics is really easy it's really easy you you flip a switch and ta-da you've got a match and that's just not what it is and the csi effect has two points to it one uh there was an influx of people who wanted to become forensic scientists um, thinking that they got to wear a gun on their hip and be really cool and arrest people. And that's just not what happens at all. It's complete fallacy. Um, so universities in a lot of countries were absolutely inundated with people who wanted to do forensics. Um, but also it's led to people thinking that they know all about forensics and Therefore, when a case like the Gilgo Beach case heats up and there's a an arrest, you know, watching the news, there's, um, you know, literally thousands of pieces of evidence that they've taken out of this guy's house. Um, 279 firearms. Just let that sink in. 279. A filing cabinet full of paperwork boxes and boxes of other things, freezers to go through, two storage units, two other properties and a timeshare that have to be gone through. There are thousands of pieces of evidence and that evidence has to be sifted through. They have to 
do visual looks. So taking one of these firearms, they have to take photographs from every angle and make sure that they've got measurements and everything else. And then they then do a, a visual inspection and they write a report on what they can see. Then they can start looking at it properly and looking for trace ev evidence. So hairs, fibers, that kind of thing, gunshot residue, an estimation on when it was last fired, uh, if it's even working. Um, <clears throat> then they can start swabbing if they think that it's worth swabbing. Um, so that alone, it's hours of work per gun. Um, and people tend to think, oh, there's going to be DNA on everything. Well, no. Um, there's going to be fingerprints. No. Um, all of these things are actually, like, it isn't, as easy as everything you touch has fingerprints on it. It doesn't. Um, so if you've got very, very dry hands, you don't leave fingerprints. If you've got very wet or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, or sweaty hands, that's going to smudge the fingerprints. They're not going to be usable. So you've got to get that sweet spot. Um, it's also, you know, how many people have ha handled that thing before crime scene techs have gone in and, and picked it up. Um, it's it's just not as simple. And also, I think I think it's about 10% of the population of non-secretors. So what that means is bodily fluids don't leave DNA. Um, so it's it's not always possible to get a DNA sample from these things. Um, a DNA test takes four hours. So each uh, each swab that they think has any kind of DNA sample on it, that's 10, uh, sorry, that's four hours per item. Um, crime labs are backed up anyway. They're, there's usually a, a turnaround of around three months on stuff. Now, obviously, this may get pushed through quicker, but um, you know, if if you've got urgent cases that are going to court or whatever else, and you've got to recheck those results and make sure there's no mistakes before you go to court, that's got to come first. Uh, you know, this guy, as callous as it is, he's locked away right now. It can wait a little bit. Um, and of course, then you've you've got to cross-reference everything that you've found with anything they find in any of the other states, so Nevada and um, South Carolina. So it it's just not as simple. And I, the reason I'm talking about this today is I, I saw plenty of comments. Um, I was watching the lawyer you know who is brilliant. He was going through the search warrant and what was listed. Um, but obviously doesn't get into the uh, outside of kind of motive and, and the legal aspect of putting defense on and stuff like that. When he talks, he doesn't talk about the human element or the the stuff that he doesn't know, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, and he had a bunch of people uh, in his comments going, oh, right, so they found nothing then. And I, uh? <laughs> They've only just closed the crime scene. <laughs> you know, the, it's not flick a switch, you get a DNA match because you, you run the DNA to get the profile and then it has to be matched. This guy's DNA, as far as they're aware, isn't in the national database. And um, uh, Me Too, Temp, Me Too, I think he is absolutely amazing at what he does and you know his dad um they really do deep dives and i really appreciate just how much work goes into them um and he's live pretty much every day talking about various cases i absolutely adore him um but when it comes to the forensics and the psychology you know um there there were some odd comments that he was like yeah i mean that might be the case and um, kind of, I get twitchy fingers um, uh, because 
kind of obviously different channels have different takes I wouldn't sit here and say I know the law I wouldn't really be talking about that side of things um I can talk about his house and what they found and why maybe they found it the way they did and stuff like that I can't talk about search warrants um you know I'm I'm not you know I'm I'm not skilled in that way um so you know uh there there were also similar comments on live news broadcasts about it of kind of yeah we've closed off the crime scene um we've taken 279 uh firearms and for their law new york law says that anything that contains gunpowder that can be fired in some way is a firearm so it doesn't actually have to be a working firearm. And all of these could be antique weapons. Every single one of them could be over, I can't remember how many years old it is, um, and would be classed as an antique weapon, but it is still classed as a firearm. Um, so, you know, and people are frustrated that they don't know more, which I understand because this is a, a, it's a case that has touched a lot of people around the world. Um but they've only just closed off the crime scene. <laughs> Give the techs a chance. Um, this is weeks, if not months, even at full staffing capacity to do a thorough forensic job. Um, and to say something like, well, you know, what you're saying is you're done and you've got nothing. No, what you're saying is they're done with the crime scene. <laughs> like, you know, um, and it was the same with there were comments with the ground penetrating radar. And I've seen this myself in, in TV shows now, Bones. I absolutely love Bones. Um, and in the description, I've put the first six books by Kathy Rikes, who Bones is um, is based on. She's a real life uh, forensic pathologist. Um, she is absolutely amazing at her job. She actually has a, a cameo appearance in uh, in Bones season three, I think. Um, but her work is really good because it goes very deep into the forensic pathology side of things and um, and that kind of thing. I really enjoy her books. Um, uh, and it, in one of the episodes in Bones, and again, it was early on, they were using GPR and um, this screen, black, black and white and grey screen came up with this perfect shape of a rib bone. And that's just not how GPR works. Um, like you get different depths and you get kind of uh, there'll be a blip rather than an exact shape. Um, so when they came to excavate, Howerman's back garden everyone was like oh you know oh that, that's where the vault is and and that's where the the soundproof room is and and of course they came up empty there was nothing of note in the back garden it was like well you didn't search hard enough you know they're, they're giving the police a really hard time now the police in kind of 2007 to 2015 I think it was yes give them a hard time because there were some terrible cover-ups for their own purposes that stalled this uh, this investigation. Um, and, you know, as someone else pointed out, you don't wake up at 46 and um, just suddenly decide to kill four people and then go back to sleep. Um, that That's not how these people operate. It is almost unheard of. Uh, for someone to kill that many people and then just go back to a quiet life. Um, uh, so, you know, they blundered it and there are, you know, and, and they did it for their own purposes. They were covering up their own crimes. Uh, the police commissioner, uh, DA and assistant DA, I think it was. Um, so yeah um and the problem is is you know with with old um uh with with old evidence depending on how it was stored they may not be able to get a full dna profile they may have to um they may have to replicate the dna and that's a long process so they take a tiny tiny bit of dna and they replicate it 
and then they replicate those two and then they you know build on out until they have a complete profile and it takes a long time the other thing they can do is mitochondrial dna testing which is from the mother's line down um to identify other victims because of course there are seven other bodies on that beach there are seven other victims either of him or other people um a couple of which haven't been identified so hopefully this will lead to that as well going back to the database before i got sidetracked so the national database in america there isn't a um there isn't a statute that says police uh, jurisdictions have to upload uh, suspect DNA or convicted uh, felons DNA to the system. So there are some counties and states that do it automatically, um, although there's a backlog in up uploading those. Um, in some states, that's up to six months backlog. Um, so, uh, yeah, so all of these things mean that it could be really difficult to work out where he may have operated. Um, there is a high suspicion that he operated in other places. So they are contacting those law enforcements, but everyone's got to conduct their investigation and then come together and compare evidence. These things take a long time time uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much that's very kind of you yes I I do tend to deep dive into this stuff and I'm hoping you're getting value out of it um because I find it fascinating I really do uh it could be a, a three yeah it could be a ghost weapon um that's yeah it, yeah i think that is why uh new york have the law that they do that everything that can utilize gunpowder to go bang uh would be classed as a weapon um and yeah go, ghost guns are a big issue um and that again brings in a whole new set of charges. This is the other thing, is they know that he had 95 guns. That that was what was registered and they knew about. But again, in New York, you are not obligated to register long guns. Handguns, you must. Long guns, you can buy from any outlet, any store, just with your driving license. Um, and again, that it takes time to work out whether these are legal or illegal guns. Um, yes, um, but that is a very different kettle of fish. I can go into a bit of profiling stuff if you want me to. Um, but yeah, they can take breaks but only for a certain amount of time, what they're more likely to do is go out of state or change um, location for disposal, um, which is just awful. Hey, Stee, how are you doing? I don't know why I sang to you. Um... Uh, but yeah, I, the the profile of someone like this is is really, really, uh, really, really interesting to me. <laughs> Whoa, America is like GTA for real. It it kind of is. Com when when you look at these laws in isolation, yes, um, and yes, there is there is a a gun violence problem. Um, I think most people can see that, but um, it's it's actually not like GTA. Like I don't know anyone in, in the States that walks down the road and is run over and sworn out. Um, although <laughs> I'm sure that does happen. Um, so the problem with, with people making these comments is it um it 
is a morale drop for the police. They are doing everything they can. They have done a very thorough search of that property. Uh, you compare that to Alex Murdoch's property that was um, released back to the family in less than 24 hours after a double homicide. Um, you know, this was a really thorough investigation of the house, every inch of that house. Um, and that's quite impressive. Now, we do, we do forensics here very differently because our police forces all fall under the same jurisdiction. So um, they work together. They have the same procedures no matter what. So our forensics teams work in a very methodical set process, um, whereas in the States there isn't a set process process for police forensics. Um, yeah, so it depends on the backlog. The actual DNA profile test or the, the actual profile can be developed in four hours from the sample being brought in um but the backlog in a lot of places there just aren't enough techs for the amount of dna samples which is why sadly there's an awful lot of serial perpetrators um especially sexual offenses that get away with it for so long um you know they're in and out of prison how were they not caught? Well, because their DNA sample just had not been processed yet from a crime however long ago. Um, and that's something that really does need to change. Um, and it, it's true in a lot of countries. Um, controversial, but I, I'm actually all for a DNA database. Um, like, everyone... Um, every, everyone is on the database, really easy to run, really easy to, um, to find, um, kind of find matches. And it makes it a lot easier to identify victims, you know, that have been in car crashes or, you know, Jane Doe's or whatever. Um, Yeah, there, there's a lot of people that just, for whatever reason, don't end up on the database. Um, and it, it could be because, again, we've seen this before. Um, people that have had their DNA taken have been in and out of prison. And a crime from, from a long time ago has just never caught up with them. And the issue with that is um, it dispels this uh, kind of commonly held belief that when you're in the system you're in the system um so it emboldens people if you've got someone who has got away with a crime their dna's in the system and no one picked it up um they they're gonna keep it, it emboldens emboldens them but other people uh that are worried about being caught so um yeah it's not not a good thing really. And cases like this, where there are thousands of items to go through, that's part of the reason why they're so backlogged. You know, at four hours a test, um, that's 4,000 person hours just on the DNA. So, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, do uh, just check and see whether I have missed anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so I was I was frustrated by some of the some of the comments really. Um, and again, to debunk, it's not a soundproof vault that they found. It was a room in his basement that had a steel door on it. And again, in my last video, I spoke about that. It's the fact that, you know, if you've got guns in the house, it makes sense to have a gun room. Um, it's really easily explained. 
Uh, they've not said how big the gun room was, but if you've got nearly 300 firearms in there, plus any duck hunting equipment and other things, um, I can't imagine it being a small room. But having said that, there are people in, in America that have walk-in wardrobes that are the size of my office space here. So, you know, what you guys call small and what we call small, two different things. Oh, um, that's a bit warm. Uh, so, yeah, so the, the problem with programs like CSI is is that people expect this instant result. And that is also a result of having Google in your pocket, um, being able to look things up. People expect an instant answer and it does set things back. The other part of it is that, you know, it, it stops other victims from coming forward. Um, the likelihood is, is there are other women out there who escaped from this guy, either got a weird vibe while they were on a date with him or, um, you know, in his earlier days, uh, there usually with this kind of killer, there is someone who gets away. Um, uh, and, you know, they're going to be looking at the news and going, well, oh, thank goodness I don't need to go to the police because they've got all of this evidence, you know, and CSI tells me they're going to get the guy. And it, it works both ways. It means that witnesses aren't as likely to come forward. Um, ooh. How about now? Am I back? Am I back? Well, bums. Hmm. Yay! I'm back. 
I am back. Guess who's back? Back again. Uh, right, so I'm going to try this again. Uh, yeah, see, jewels are where it's at. Give someone a good glove slap and then invite them to a jewel. Um, yes, going back, going back to where I didn't have sound and I was talking to myself. Um, yeah, see, this this really upsets me because the family are getting a lot of stick and they shouldn't. Um, no family member should unless it comes out that they did know something and that should come out through the investigation. Um, but we've got a lot of people kind of going, oh, well, the family should have known something. And this was another thing that happened over on The Lawyer You Know. It's kind of, you know, well, look at all of this stuff coming out of the house. It's a freezer. I've got a freezer. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the doll in the glass case, pretty creepy, but could have been a family heirloom. You know, I've I've got a cabinet full of family stuff that I inherited when my parents died a couple of years ago. So, you know, how creepy is any of this in kind of in that context? It's not. I know loads of people with multiple phones. That's, you know, there is a logical reason, um, including YouTubers who use them like they've got their personal phone. And they've got a phone for voicemails um, for their call in shows or, you know, that kind of thing. I've got friends that have a phone that's always charged but never turned on. They take it camping with them. So if there's an emergency, they've got a full battery. Um, you know, there are loads of, of reasons to have mo multiple phones. Um, uh... See, that's the other thing could be a haunted family heirloom and you know in that case don't take it out of the box um mm -mm -mm. uh yeah i was i was saying um you know he yeah he's he's a businessman so having a locked office um i mean they don't really have gdpr or anything like that kind of thing over there but over here me working from home if I'm keeping paper copies or copies of clients information I've got to keep it under lock and key um I've you know that there are all sorts of reasons to have a, a a safe room maybe he it was a panic room maybe he was a prepper um and also that there is this assumption, I spoke about this the other day, but there is this assumption that sh they bought that house together and moved in together. Um, they got married when he was 32. So he was already well established in his career. He had been married before. You know, he could have owned that house before she even came into his life, before they even met. All of this stuff could have been in place and she would never have known about it. Um, yeah, like honest, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. If I was in the States, I would have a locked gun room. My other half, uh, used to shoot, um, when he was in, uh, kind of, uh, cadets. Um, and if we lived in the States, we'd probably go to the gun range and any weapons we would have would would be kept to UK laws. Um uh but also I'm I'm a little bit of a prepper. Don't tell anyone. Um I I like to have extra stuff because of the pandemic and even before that it was you know when you struggle for money if you buy an extra tin of something or an extra bag of rice each shop you've got a little store for Okay, I can't afford to go shopping this month, this week, this month, whatever. Um, so I'm a bit, bit of a prepper. And if I had a basement, which I would love to have a basement, but I don't have a basement. If I had one, um, I, I would be storing stuff down there. So, yeah, it could have been a makeout room. Yeah, uh, 
Although I would say, given what they've released about what they've found, uh, it's not the kind of makeup room, makeout room that we're okay with, Stee. Um, yeah, I'm not a toilet roll hoarder. Um, yeah, and I'm nice and rural. I've always got food in the house. We're just turn it into a commune it's fine um sorry I, I there's a fly there's a flying something behind my laptop and it's been driving me nuts um but the thing is i mean especially in, in the states there's a lot more preppers here in the uk and in the states than people realize um uh some of them are on on the verge of uh going too far in my opinion um some of them are prepping in the hopes of an apocalypse um but yeah you know, there are loads of reasons for all of this stuff um you know the, the equivalent here is is a loft an attic uh most houses have a loft uh most houses have a boarded loft so kind of you You've got boards along the, the beams. Sorry, too excited. Um, and we saw stuff up there. I I don't go in the loft. The other half is in control of that space. So I don't know what he's got up there. Don't ask. <laughs> We've got a shed in the garden. Don't ask about that either. Like, as a couple, there is nothing weird about kind of like he doesn't know what's in the kitchen cupboards i do i don't know what's in the loft he does there's, there's nothing weird about that um and people are reading far too much into this um my father had a bunker in our first house it was there since world war ii that's cool what an amazing piece of history. That's very, very cool. And there are properties that have those here. Still have World War II bunkers here. Um, you know, uh, a friend of mine bought a house. Uh, it's got a huge cellar, um, uh, which is what we call basements. Um, it's the whole size of the... Again, what... <laughs> I need to find a comfortable position for my microphone. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the size of the whole of the downstairs of the house. And um, the previous, it was really creepy. The previous owners, when she, when she went to look round, uh, kind of went, yep, yeah, um, we've never been down there. I think we looked at it when we bought the house like 20 years ago, but we've not not been down there since. So it's, it's probably a bit cobwebby. Well, when she moved in, she had a little look around and the sale, house sale took ages. And she she went down there um, and it, it had tins of food from like the 1940s and all sorts of blankets and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and obviously, you know, people who lived there in the 1940s had turned it into a bit of a bomb shelter, which was very cool. I'd love, love a cellar. When we got this place, there was there was a house that was for sale before we were able to really commit to buying um, that had a cellar. And I, I, I'm still in love with that cellar. Does that make me weird? <laughs> when talking about a potential serial killer and I'm like, I'd really like a cellar. Rick says it was creepy in there, was it? Why was it creepy in there? Because I think sometimes these these spaces feel creepy because of context, right? Like going into that locked room in How Howerman's house, uh, Howerman's basement, it must have been creepy before they got there because they knew what he had been arrested for and what they were looking for. Um, so there's, there's kind of a context to the stories that are going to come out later on when, when we get these true crime documentaries and, and everything else. Um, 
I'd like a seller just in case. Yeah, exactly. Better to have one and not need one than need one and not have one. Low and damp. Yeah, a lot of World War II bunkers, because they were made very hastily, um, they were not comfortable. They were a lot smaller than people think they were. And the idea of being in there with lots of other people getting hot and uncomfortable in a cramped space, you know, must have been terrifying on so many levels for people. I'd love a shed or a loft so I could be all creepy like Baba Yaga. Who's Baba Yaga? Um, is that something that the young kids know about? People my age don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I will admit when the war in Ukraine first um, first kicked off. Um, I did research how to make the house as safe as possible should there be fallout. Um, uh, and at the time we were at the other house, um, okay, I, I will have to look this up. I will have to learn some new stuff. Thank you. Um, uh, temp knows, yeah, temp does know. Temp knows more than than I do for sure. Clever sod. Um, yeah, we were at the other house, and I was like, oh, not enough dirt, <laughs> not enough dirt. Uh, now I have enough dirt, so I can make my my house as um as fallout proof as possible. Um. But yeah, that, does that say more about, is this now a therapy session? <laughs> Have I now shared too much? Um, yeah, I mean, all, all of these, these things don't mean anything um, individually. And that's the whole point in gathering evidence. There isn't a smoking gun, uh, to, to use a phrase. Um, you have to accumulate things. Um, and you have to be able to put him there, right there. Um, and one of the things that, you know, um, I, I replied to the lady who was like, well, the police, police have got nothing. You know, they're nowhere with this case again. And I, I said, look, these things take... Um, uh, take time like going through 279 firearms is is big work and someone replied and went these women were strangled there's no point in even looking at the weapons they like oh they've taken them for a reason because with someone like this if if he is guilty of what he's suspected of the more charges they can throw at this guy the better and if he has nearly 200 weapons that are illegal, that's great. Those gun charges alone will put him away for life. So, um, uh, Temp says, Andy, was that clever sod or was it handsome? I think it was handsome, right? Yes, it was. Absolutely. I would never, never call you a sod. Never. <laughs> um... Mm -mm -mm. both are a compliment and pick wisely exactly I feel like I'm no matter what I say I'm gonna lose but actually Steve has a point you can be clever and handsome at the same time <laughs> um yeah, kind of this this armchair CSI thing is is really frustrating because people are very short-sighted what they're looking at right now is he killed these women what they're not thinking about is the trial because all of this is part of who he is and what he's suspected to be um 
to have done. Um, the other thing is those firearms may be linked. Did he treat himself to a new firearm with every um, successful, uh, in his mind, successful date? I'm going to phrase it that way. Um, because you never know what a trophy is to these people. Obviously, we know he kept cell phones, but, you know, um, there have been serial killers that have, for every murder, have, have gone out and bought their partner jewellery. So, you know. Um, but also, these these seven other people that were slightly away from the four, how were they um, treated? Can they tie him to those people because they were um, maybe killed differently? Was there a different MO? Um, uh, because one of one of the theories um, uh, and part of a theory that I have is, some of those may be his victims and they got in the way. They were witnesses um, or they were extras. So was the chap um, driving his girlfriend or, um, you know, did one of the other girls work for him, one of the other women, sorry, work for him and he was driving them to a meeting point? Um, there was, you know, there's a Jane Doe and a baby Doe, you know, was it a woman who left her kid in the car so desperate for money and work, um, that she had a kid and a friend, a kid and her boyfriend, you know, in the car. There are lots of reasons for extras and those weapons could be tied in. Um, just checking the chat. Um, doesn't always mean anything. Um, uh, like everyone likes to think that a killer will just stick to their MO, never change, never deviate once they find their preferred way of, of doing things. And it isn't necessarily true. Um, so let's take Israel Keys, for example. Um, he used several different methods. Sometimes he disposed of the body, sometimes he didn't. Um, there is a pattern to how he did things. There is absolutely a pattern there when you zoom out. Um, but, you know, if, if you're just looking for strangulation, then, yeah, they, they may not tie in. But if you're looking for uh, area, um, body type, all sorts of other things and links to family members. So let's say the the chap, I cannot remember his name, and I, I really do apologize, um, Asian chap. Let's say he drove his partner or friend to meet Howman for a date. Hypothetical. Howman sees her arrive with someone. He then has to control that situation. So pulls out a firearm, dispatches matey boy and grabs her. He's adapted to the situation, but it isn't his fantasy scenario. So this Asian chap gets dumped further away the other side of the beach because that's not something he's proud of he didn't plan for that that wasn't organized it was messy 
Um, and my feeling is that the four women that were kind of similar distances apart were his, they fit the fantasy. If he's responsible for any of the, the people on the other side of the beach, they didn't fit his fantasy, which is why they were just thrown away. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Fred and Rose West didn't always kill the same way. Um, you know, that there will be intricacies in the MO. It's like a signature um, or a, a fingerprint. But, you know, and the, the problem with profiling, again, Criminal Minds, brilliant program, but gives a false impression because it's um, based on um, uh, out, some outdated information. So this idea that a killer won't cross racial lines is not true. It comes from studying... Um, killers at a time when neighborhoods were segregated um kind of the the 40s 50s 60s um it was about accessibility not about preferences um so again with the gilgo beach um yes the the four women that they have identified and they believe for him him to be the the perpetrator are all white very petite and everything else but you also have women on the other side that are petite and not white as a black lady and a hispanic lady um as well as a couple of white people and the asian male um so and that's the other thing People change it up. Um, if he was almost, let's, again, wild speculation. This is my theory. He starts his um, original spree across state lines in South Carolina. There were four women found equidistant behind a, an abandoned motel that are pretty similar to uh, the Gilgo Beach Four. Uh, the police get a little bit too close after that. So he switches things up. He spends some time in Vegas at his timeshare and his other property that he and his brother own, you know, maybe does some other stuff, refines his, his technique, um, doesn't get caught for a little while, gets a little bit emboldened and starts kind of killing very close to his own house um uh and these four women behind the motel in south carolina were a similar distance away from his home with his brother or the property with his brother um so you know there are patterns there and there are jane does and identified women that have been um uh, found to have similar uh similar wounds and similar situations so um yeah um so people do they they change their routine they change the area they uh find excuses to be out of town and you know go somewhere that they are familiar with but that is well out of the way so that there's less chance of being caught um and and they evolve too and then devolve almost always they devolve uh and become like this kind of killer fully organized um will start to devolve and become less organized um if they're not caught um so yeah what do you guys think 
What are your thoughts on this? Because I'm very aware that I've done nothing but talk. You tell me while I have a little little drink. Definitely got a problem with stream elements. <laughs> I don't know why. The, the chat bot is meant to come up every now and again and share some links and stuff with you. But it's not. Let's see if I can fix that. Why well, you no know work? No, no, I don't want that. Um, yeah, it says it's all live. Maybe I broke it. Uh, yeah, they, I, I wouldn't say lazy, but complacent for sure. Um, they do start to get sloppy. The the amount of serial killers that have been caught because they suddenly become a dumbass. Um, you know, Israel keys, random traffic stop. Um, I, there, there have been so many that have been broken tail light, random traffic stop, called the police because someone stole something and <laughs> they get caught. Um... I will definitely ask Zayden about how to get my chatbot thing working. Um, never got to deal with it. Is that the random traffic stops that caught you out? Or stream elements? Um, I have had it working, but it just spammed constantly um so I, I readjusted the timers and now it doesn't go off at all um uh, i think the type of person that goes out their way to hurt other people has to be very deceptive as a default yeah um i mean it's it's such a complex thing because there are so many different types of of killer. Um, not all psychopaths are killers. Not all killers are psychopaths. Um, so the the context of how they got there is is really informative. I mean, ultimately, we don't really care because they're terrible human beings. But learning about them means that maybe we can find ways to spot this before it happens. Um, but this guy lived a double life. Whether he committed these murders or not, he was living a double life um, for many reasons. Um, and, you know, by definition, psychopaths are really good at deceiving. They are really good at deceiving. Um, most psychopaths learn very early on how to mimic responses. Um, they understand that they don't work the same way as other people. So they learn to respond. They learn to mimic emotions that they feel differently to us or don't feel at all. Um, and most psychopaths, like you know, 90% of all psychopaths actually go on to live very fruitful lives. Um, they can feel love. Um, just it's it's not the same is the easiest way to phrase it without getting into real technical stuff. It's not their fault. Their brain is different. Their brain, their brain is literally different. Um, scans show that there are differences in the structure of their brain um so it is a you know it's a physical thing um people don't turn into psychopaths but they can have that switched on in the early years depending on um 
kind of f their formative years, what happens, what kind of household they grow up in. Um, you know, if they and and that's not always true. There are some psychopaths that grow up in completely normal. Oh, I lost my my thing again. Um, there are some psychopaths that grow up in completely normal households where it's recognized that they think differently. Um, most of the time it, it's treated like a neurodivergence, even though it's not. Um, and they can still go off the rails. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I think there's certainly a, a phase where they think they're invin invincible. Um, there is definitely a phase where they think they're invincible, for sure. Um, I will say, you know, most, like you, you think about Ed Kemper. Um, he knew he would be caught at some stage, um, but most of the time he was just too good at hiding in plain sight. I mean, he confessed to being the killer. He used to go drinking with the cops working on his case in a cop bar and they had no idea it was him. And, it, you know, one night he decided to, to confess and they didn't believe him and they thought it was hilariously funny. But he knew, you know, him and his Roku keys and a few others all knew that you know, they'd only get away with it for so long. Um, but all the time they could get away with it, they would. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's that's a devolved uh, situation. Um, at some point they lose or they, they start to lose control of what they're doing and it it becomes more of an obsession which means they're more likely to make mistakes um or get more and more gruesome um which is just awful um Yeah, see, I mean, it's the same with an awful lot of, I don't know, fandom and subsections, especially here on YouTube. Like, I've seen LawTube devolve into kind of hurtful situations. I've seen true crime stuff go that way. Um, I I tend to stay away from the sensationalism of it. I want to learn from it. Um, I want us to be safer. I want us to learn from the behavior of others. And when we see these comments and and that kind of thing, be armed with information to have an a a positive debate about it without, you know, mudslinging. I mean, on our side, you you can't change how someone else is going to be. Um, Uh, sorry if that came out as insulting, um, uh, that I do not respond to this topic, but hey, I'm here and audio listening to you in the background. I just try not to mind it. Uh, it gives me negative energy and I, I can absolutely understand that. And I'm, I'm really sorry to turn me off. You don't, you don't have to stay. I love the fact that you want to be here and support, but you know, don't, don't do that to yourself. Um, really, it's, it's about kind of looking at why people want a quick answer, why people don't want to wait and, and don't want to educate themselves on a, a topic so they know about this weight. I mean, we all want the perpetrator to be brought to justice. Um, but we do need to be patient, as awful as that is, after, you know, over 10 years for these poor women. Um, you know, it's, 
but yeah, I stay away from the sensationalism. When I when I did some research for this, um, I I came across more than a few channels that are, you know, plastering these awful thumbnails and and titles where it's you know it's just um it it's about making it a story making it sensational for clicks and views um and my my job is is to support to educate to reach people um and to to share the lessons that we can learn from something like this. I mean, we can't learn anything from Howerman, really, that will change the way we do things and help us learn about ourselves. But it will help us learn about the world around us. Um, and we can be more aware. We can understand why these things take so, so much time. We can practice patience. We can practice compassion for his family as well as the family of the victims we can practice compassion for the community and um the shock that they must be going through um and also to look at it and and you know realize that, that there's an awful lot of people now like his next door neighbor is like oh he was out there all hours of the day and night digging holes in his back garden they found nothing it's really easy to Monday morning quarterback a situation. And this is something we can learn from. It is really easy to look back on a situation with what we know now, with the context we have now, a Monday morning quarterback, ours or someone else's decisions. Um, you know, and it's useless. We were not there in that moment of, of time um you can't judge people for not realizing what was going on if it was going on because these people hide in plain sight that is how they find their victims and gain trust and everything these people learn how to how to abuse uh, and use a situation um and it is not helpful to the investigation or to the mental health of people viewing this I, if your neighbor is in in the back garden digging it up at stupid o'clock in the morning make a phone call just you know non-emergency telephone number in the uk it's 101 like i don't know whether this is a crime but it's definitely suspicious you know don't hold that to yourself for 15 years and then, oh, I knew it was him. No, you didn't. Because if you did, you would have made that phone call. You know, um, that's my one of my rants for today, I suppose. Um, uh, it would be like how neurodivergent people mask, uh, but it makes it dangerous when they're wired the way they are. Yeah, so... This is a really interesting point. Psychopathy isn't a neurodivergence. And it is really important to make that clear because people who are neuro neurodivergent aren't psychopaths. They aren't killers. Let's not go back to the 40s, 50s, and 60s uh, and, and how we view, and later, to be honest with you, embarrassingly and shamefully. Um, yeah, so these people mask, but they are really good at compartmentalizing. They are literally two people. So when they're at home and at work, they are this person. That other person doesn't exist. When they are on the hunt, we'll call it that, they are that person. That part of them does not exist. It's like they're turning on and off uh, different aspects of themselves. Um, absolutely. They're, they're very good at mimicking um, and, and blending in. They learn very quickly what's expected of them to be able to get along. Um, uh, I don't think so. I like true crime to learn about human behavior. Me too. Um, 
And a lot of that comes from my own trauma. I needed to try and work out what makes people tick to give myself context. Um, and it, it is fascinating to me. And not just the perpetrator. It's, you know, their family, their friends, the victims, their family, their friends. It's, it's about learning from the whole situation and learning about human behavior. Because let's face it, there is absolutely nothing that certain human beings will not do to other human beings, psychopath or not. Um, Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm just... <laughs> completely silent um yeah see btk was a different type of killer um uh and he liked the glory he was he he reveled in it uh and that was eventually his downfall thank goodness um uh, do, do, do. Uh, sorry, I am. I am so far behind on chat. It's really nice that you were all talking to each other. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the titles and thumbnails and things, they do draw people in. People want the information. Uh, I mean, I, I had uh, someone who I've not seen leave a comment on any of my other videos, watch my last one. and. You know, people are fascinated by it because it is so far out of the realm of, of how we would normally think, right? Um, I refuse to click on anything that is sensationalized. I want facts. I want data. Um, and I want to learn about, you know, how how they progress with the investigation. Um, not because I'm, I'm morbidly curious about the details, but about the science. Um, uh, do, do, do. Yeah, so, Tam, you know, for me, I completely understand where you're coming from um, in terms of, of kind of when you get too deep in it. Um, this is this is actually the career I wanted. I, I, I wanted to be a forensic pathologist. I wanted, um, I've always been scared of anonymous death. Um, I think because of some of Dad's stories. That's definitely not child's safe stories of uh, various combat situations. Um, and I really wanted to give families answers. Um, I wanted to be able to say this is what happened um, and identify those that had passed, um, you know, fire, accident, whatever. Um, and, it, you know, it wasn't to be. I wasn't um allowed to go to university um to study it and I've always been really interested it's why I've I've put the Kathy Reich's books down there because they're factual that like the story is fiction although some of it is based on on her actual cases um but it's it's about the process it's about there's something so soothing 
about the methodical nature of this, um, of, of how to identify someone, how to um, work out what happened and why, and hopefully get the bad guy. I want to know that the bad guy gets got. You know, I don't need the gruesome details for that. Um, I would really recommend there's a podcast called True Crime Bullshit, um, which is about is for the most part, it's about Israel Keys, um, who was a prolific serial killer. Um, but again, weirdly likable. Um, and he was fascinating. Uh his his pathology, his psychology was different, but he there is a pattern there. Um and the reason I started listening to it was it was about the victims and the amount of missing people in the States. Uh, and it it becomes more about identifying and and bringing people home. Um, you know, that that is is my passion. And also, yes, what we can learn about the psychology. Um, I think for me, one of my big drivers is learning about people is is. Working, I, I am still trying to, you know, again, we're turning this into a therapy session. I'm still trying to work out what made my mum tick. That's that's really what it's all about. And that's that's why I delve into this, or why I do so much research. Not only because I, I want to be able to give you the facts. I want to be truthful and honest um, and give you facts without drama. Um uh, 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 so Uh, hopefully I'm back. Everything flickered again. I don't, so I, I... Oh. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on uh, on chat. Oh, wow, temp, temp. I'm not going to put that on screen. Um, that's, I, I cannot imagine what that must have been like for you at 18. I am sending love. And I apologize if anything in here has, has been an issue for you. Um... Sorry about the silence. Some heavy chat going on. Oh, stream ele elements is back. Um, no, 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 Temp. At no point, at no point did any of us think you were ignoring the suffering. Not at all. Following true crime 
and true crime stories is not for everyone. It really isn't. Um, and, you know, my my point was, you know, for people who do, who are expecting instant results, that is that comes from the fact that we can just pick up our, our phones, our tablets, our, our computers uh, or smart TV and get an instant answer. And actually having access to all of that information and expecting results straight away is something that we need to deal with as humanity because life doesn't work that way. Sometimes there are no simple answers. Sometimes there are no straightforward answers. Sometimes things take time um, and we need to practice patience and compassion and everything else for all of the people involved. Um, you know, the police officers are going to work double shifts, the, the lab techs who are going to work triple shifts, you know, all of these people that are working really, really hard. Um, and we need to step outside of the you know, we get a whole story and a resolution in one hour of TV or 45 minutes of TV. Um, you know, we need to step back from that and and look at real life context sometimes um, rather than, you know, complaining that we don't have all of the answers right now on our time scale, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, totally understand, and we love you, Temp. Um, Yeah, we we do need to look at the positives. You're you're absolutely right, Temp. Like the advances in technology now to be able to combat these kind of people. Um and the fact that progress does get made. And again, sometimes we need to be patient for justice. Sometimes we don't get justice. Um, but practicing compassion and gratitude when we look at all of these these situations you know there's me talking about being a prepper I'm I have the luxury of deciding to be a, pre a, a prepper and I am grateful so unbelievably grateful that I have the opportunity to make that choice and it isn't forced on me um um and it's you know temp it, it's not about um it's not about being stronger or not the other thing about um you know again i'm going to use you for therapy but the the other thing about true crime for me um because i i, I do have this fear of anonymous death um and you know because of because of my past and the, the the abuse and and everything else you know there were times when i didn't think i was i was going to make it and now truth true crime is soothing um because the bad guy gets it like to me that's it, like i <laughs> I turn to true crime when I'm in my darkest moments, not because I'm looking for the gore and the dark and everything else, but I'm looking for the justice and the right and the good um, that people don't give up, that these these people do get a name, they get their name back, that they get their, you know, their families get the, those answers. Um See, that, that is really er eloquently put. Um, in times of peace, prepare for war. 
uh, everyone agrees. But I believe the, the part missing is stay prepared, but live your days experiencing life to the fullest and seek peace. And that is that is exactly 100 uh, percent hearts up for temp for that, because I think that it's that's like the antithesis and the opposite of you know may you live in interesting times it's you know we do i do i seek peace i like a good fruitful debate because i i think the more we talk to each other um the closer we get right um but also you know why i do this is to help others. I want to bring other other people peace. I want to talk about mental health in the terms of of social psychology and uh, the world we live in, where there are so many dark things. Um, is looking at those dark things, other people's bad behaviour, and kind of going, okay, how do I avoid that? How do we avoid that? How do we tell that behavior, that person, that that is unacceptable? How do we move forward as a human race? Um, you know, how do we learn and evolve together in a respectful way? Um, and, you know, I I think we're, we're coming at this topic from two different sides, but we both want the end goal, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because there is no one size fits all with anything, um, especially clothing. One size does not fit all when you are five foot nothing. What's the average woman wearing? Stilts? Um, Uh, I understand why you're doing it. I respect it, even admire it. Just like social workers, if a social if social workers would make twenty grand a year, uh, I would still not take the job. I know. Like this is safe. <laughs> I have computer screens between us. Like I love you all. I love being here with you. But I'm not going into homes in you know, having to deal with some of the most heartbreaking situations. So yes, absolutely. Social workers, teachers, uh, outreach, shelter workers, all of these people are absolute heroes to me. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. Right, so just to explain this, why do think so said social workers is a swear word. So for a very long time here in the UK, social workers, um, there were a lot of children taken away. There were a lot of parents taken to court um, for things that they really shouldn't have been taken away from, for. Um, and there were other children that slipped through the net and were completely ignored and ended up in terrible situations. Um, the whole system has been and is still being overhauled and is much more stringently kind of regulated and everything else. Um, but for a long time here, if someone if someone called the social worker on you, you were like you had better odds of winning the lottery than not losing your kids it was awful uh, more so in poorer areas of the uk um uh, <laughs> temp no one no one could call you a naive idiot no one um I, th there is a difference like I, I know people who do literally cover their ears and refuse to hear anything but sunshine and roses and the the problem with that is when something d bad does happen they just don't know how to handle it um and they fall apart 
and they never get over it. Um, and I, I think, I, I think there's a healthy balance of, you know, what we consume. And again, this is something that we need to learn from this is go outside and touch the grass. Um, you know, don't get so far down the rabbit hole um, that you you can't see anything else. Like, because I, I will add that, you know, I also, I play Diablo. I do needle craft. I, you know, there are other things. I, I really like Voyager. Um, there are other things that I involve myself in. Um, and yes, you know, I've got some heavy reading on my bookshelf, but I also have, you know, Terry Pratchett and Richard Osmond. Um, I've also got Age of Empires for some reason. Like, you know, <clears throat> doing something else, being aware of, learning from um, is different to sitting and gossiping about and wildly speculating I've, I've done some hypothesizing um but you know wildly speculating like some of the stuff that people were excuse me speculating about brian koberger before he was arrested um you know it's not based in fact uh it was just wild assumptions that were actually probably far more harmful and also harmful to the family um, you know, we know that that some families do consume this kind of content, probably not me because I'm, I'm not big enough, but, you know, there are other channels out there. Um, so you should always bear in mind that they might be watching. You need to be respectful. You know, none of these women deserved it. And it was made worse by the fact that the cops were corrupt. Um, and, you know, we should stop looking at someone's job as any kind of indicator over whether they were a good or bad person. A person is a person, a human being, every human being lost is, is a tragedy. Um, and we should never forget that. And that's why I had certain certain YouTubers, certain commentators, certain uh, documentaries, even and true crime stuff, really annoys me because it really focuses on the perpetrator. Um, it really focuses on um, uh, kind of the gruesome details, and really that should be a byline. It should be about the people that were victims and then the person getting caught and having the, th the book thrown at them. Auntie Giggles is here. Hearts up for Auntie Giggles. Nothing worse than corrupt cops, I know, and they are constantly after you, Auntie Giggles. We know. They keep questioning you. And they should leave you alone. Um, still trying to work out why stream elements won't work. Um, let's have a look here. Um, right. Uh, have you subscribed, Auntie Giggles? You should subscribe to the channel. Um, and yes, actually, Temp has it right. Auntie Giggles, happy to see you are well enough to be here. We are all happy. I'm definitely happy you are well enough to be here. Let's have some hearts up. And uh, you should subscribe, Auntie Giggles. Anyone who isn't subscribed, you should subscribe. If you get value out of my work, hit the thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. We'll be doing more about human behavior. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything I do, I do is about human behavior, analyzing and looking at other people's human behavior. Um, uh, you know, I will talk 
at some point about profiling. Profiling is not an exact science. There is a finesse to it. And really what it runs off of is stats, um, which, you know, narrows down the suspect pool, but isn't always right. Um, uh, there are a bunch of links to... Thank you very much, Auntie Giggles. And hopefully I can help you stay out of trouble, my dear. Um, uh, yeah, there are a bunch of links in the description to this. Uh, you can get a month of Audible on me um, and you can cancel at any point in, in that time if you wish. Um, what else did I put in there? Um, some really informative books. Um, there's a book by Dr. Shaham Das. He is a uh, forensic psychologist. Is that right? Um, uh, his book is called Into Minds, and it's talking about some of his uh, case studies. Um, he's a works lives and works in the UK. He's I don't know why I phrased it that way. He's British. Um, uh, there is. Also, um, as the Kathy Reich's books, um, a link to the the coffee that keeps me going through my epic research se research sessions. Um, uh, there's a now with those Amazon links. I am an Amazon affiliate, which means that I may get commission. Uh, it is a small commission uh, on anything you buy, but if you are looking to buy anything through uh, from Amazon, click on one of my links and then search for uh, the item that you wish to buy. That helps me out with my backend um, analytics. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so um, yeah, that makes a big difference to a small channel like this. Um, that alone, helps keep the lights on um there is also uh there's a link to vidIQ um if you click on that that also helps me out um but only if you opt to go with vidIQ on any of their plans um there is also a link to streamyard which I'm using for this because I find it more use it user friendly um and you will get uh, $10 credit when you spend uh, your first $25 on their service um, because you used my link. Uh, that's Those are easy, um, easy ways to support the channel that it doesn't cost you anything. Um, kind of the, the free plans with vidIQ and stuff like that just helps me out, makes me look good. Um, and that makes a difference. Um, uh... <laughs> right, so we, we've now got Auntie Giggles in the chat being silly, and I love it. I'm here for it. Although Auntie Giggles, Rick, and Stee in the chat at the same time is just dangerous. Just dangerous. Um, you can also, um, should you wish to, and if you can afford to, you can send me a tip through stream elements. Um, I'm so annoyed that my timers don't work. It really annoys me. Um, I shall just put that link in the chat. Um, I hope you, you don't see this as too grifty. Uh, but I worked, <laughs> I, I did a silly and I worked out how much it costs to run a YouTube channel, how much I've been spending without realizing it. Um, so I, I just want help keeping the lights on. <laughs> That's all. Um, uh, yeah, the amount of research time is, I mean, I'm loving it. Don't get me wrong. I am not complaining. I chose these topics. And I really do enjoy the deep dives. Um, uh, but yeah, 
just help me keep keep me in coffee. That's all I ask. Um, uh, you can also catch me on social media. Pretty much every social media is at Craftalytical. So come and join in there. Um, yeah, just thought I'd remind you now. Um, I have not... <laughs> I'm looking for my phone and it's it it's here. It's what I'm recording on. I have not checked my PayPal. Um which I've actually got sorted out now. <clears throat> um I've got my um what what date is it? <laughs> oh. I've, I, I don't know. Um, can someone come help me? Um, uh, yeah, I realized the other day that I hadn't, I'd set up my PayPal, um, but I hadn't set it up properly. Um, so like my, for some reason, I hadn't set up the business name side of things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, mm -mm -mm. I'm just gonna while that's loading. <laughs> the will isn't through yet, so I can't donate. I am so sorry, Auntie Giggles, that you are still trapped in the probate nightmare that you've been in which husband is that um uh yes so sorry i do think so i should have been clearer about that um so yeah when i send money um it wasn't coming up with who i who i was i hadn't set up the paypal me link properly um which you know, I should have done really. Um, silly, silly girl. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I hadn't set up um, the that side of things. So it was the really long link that was in my PayPal. Um, Holy moly, this is, I, honestly, I don't know what is going on with my settings. <laughs> like, the web page was like 67%. It's like, I can't see, is that me? Um, thank you very much, me. I really do appreciate, um, uh, really do appreciate your your donation that makes a huge difference um i i really do appreciate that thank you very much um all money all money goes towards running the channel and and it uh, honestly thank you um uh rick says don't be silly you're not grifting enough uh, you're too too cute apologising for nothing. Do you know that there is a fine balance between letting people know that they can if they want to and saying it like every three minutes, literally interrupting a guest on the show or themselves to say, donate money. Um, and I desperately don't want to be the latter. Um Um, uh, sorry, I have to share this one. Auntie Giggles says 24th, 24th husband all told third this year. Oh, three and seven months. You just keep losing more and more every year. Auntie Giggles, I, you get the worst luck, don't you? Um, yes. I know me is you. Um, this is going to get confusing. Um, yes, 
it it was on the page and I I very much appreciate that but I you know and because it says from me I didn't I didn't want to say names um because uh like some people want to donate anonymously like I usually do to channels that I love um because I I don't want people to feel like weird about it <laughs> it's all my hang-ups isn't it this really is a therapy session tonight um I'm so sorry I will get my stuff together I promise or get my stuff together and leave um uh, I haven't seen Yvonne for a little while is she okay <laughs> did she fall asleep Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions or any thoughts that they want to share? Um, any points that, that I haven't made that you think maybe I should have, really? Or anything else that you'd like to talk about? <laughs> if Vaughn is still here, that's good. You went quiet. You went quiet. I was just a bit worried. Just a bit worried. I'm hoping you've got your new medication and you're just you're blissed out at the moment. Um oh, damn. Thank you. I'm really glad that despite the topic choice um you think it was a good stream and I honestly really appreciate you just hanging in there through it and for for giving us that reality check because sometimes we need that and I, I really do appreciate that um I shouldn't think too much it causes terrible wrinkles you are right which is why I look like a, a very haggard 43 <laughs> I think too much because it's it's hard work. Sometimes you've got to put some effort into forcing a thought through. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I'm just. Uh. Uh, my brain is smooth like an egg. <sighs> uh, CSI is a TV show and people are not working in a lab, lab with comments about a case. Not quite following you, Rick. But yeah, I, I if if I've got that right, it's yeah, TV isn't real. <laughs> People expect it to be. Um, and maybe that's a side effect of this this binge watch culture. Um, that we we now have access to and it's amazing and I take full advantage of it I binge listen to podcasts I listen to a podcast all night um, sometimes you know if, if I'm able to sleep it plays while I'm asleep um, but most of the time it, it just it keeps me company and I'm learning something um, but I do binge watch and when I get to the end of a series of a podcast um, you know, I, I struggle to wait between seasons, if I'm honest. Um, and that's not healthy, is it? That's that's not a healthy thing. And, and we do need to remember that TV isn't real. Yes, I'm I'm sorry to say the telenovelas that you watch, your stories aren't real. Um. 
Yeah, and, you know, there isn't anything wrong with having the intellectual exercise, running the intellectual exercise of how would I solve this case or what lab tests would I run, what evidence would I be looking for? There, is, there isn't anything wrong with that as a like a puzzle. It's when people then take that as a kind of, well, I would have solved this in five minutes and get aggressive or negative about it or start commenting about, you know, for instance, with the Howerman case, we know that the top guy was corrupt. We know that he was hiding evidence um, or destroying evidence to cover his own tracks when it came to um, his... Uh, dalliances with sex workers while he was on duty and you know in in the squad car and stuff like that um so you know and and the problem is is that then interfered with the work of the guys who really wanted to solve this case he sacked off the fbi agents that were helping with the initial task force um he closed down, essentially closed down the investigation and, and everything else. And there's an awful lot of people who are just like, oh, the police didn't work hard enough. Um, well, if your boss says we're closing down the operation or we're, we're scaling it back, what, what are you meant to do? It isn't like a cop show where you take the files home, which you're not allowed to do, um, and you work, it, work on it in your spare time. That's, you know, you might kind of think it through and make notes in and pace on it but if your boss has said no and there is no resources to run tests or anything else like that what what are you meant to do um uh, um, <laughs> thank goodness i'm no longer afraid of scooby-doo oh it's it's always the janitor um they always ruin a good wig. Uh there's true when they ask they're not careful as they unmask, are they? Um uh glad handmaid's tail is not real. some parts of America it is at the moment. But let's not get pol political, because I will go, and that will send me off on a rant. Um, uh, yes, Auntie Giggles, unfortunately, Dr. Drake Ramore is actually, is an actor called Joey Tribbiani. Um... Uh, yeah, you know, I, th I think sometimes we do need to go outside and touch the grass and step away from the binge watching. Um, you know, I'm listening to a really good podcast at the moment. Um, it's it's called Cryptids of the Corn, which is it's all about cryptids. Cryptids are um, uh, it's things like Bigfoot. Um, you know these monsters or strange creatures um, that, you know, are they real? Are they not? We've got p pictures, but are they fake? Um, that kind of thing. Um, and that's been really interesting. Um, uh, but they've just done, a, I've just listened to a series they did on the, on Mothman. Um, and actually that, again, it ties into kind of community psychology and, um, and that kind of thing that's been really interesting. Uh, but I am binge listening to it. You know, I, I will listen to six or seven episodes overnight. Um, I should try and do something else. <laughs> they've not covered you, they've not mentioned you, Auntie Giggles um as a cryptid they they've mentioned a lot of other weird and wonderful things that i'd never heard of so that's that's been really interesting um <clears throat> so 
see, I'd love, I, I would love to do a podcast. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's really, really tempting. But I don't know if anyone would listen. <laughs> oh, it's that craft political prat again. Let's skip that. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by the idea of doing a podcast. But, like, seriously, I don't. I podcasting is as hard, if not harder, than YouTube by a long way. Um, uh, it's harder to harder to get listens. Well, I mean, I say that it it can take a couple of years to get a thousand listens. So, um, oh, that's really sweet of you, Yvonne. Thank you. You don't know what the subject is yet. I could just be talking about frogs, which would be a really short podcast because I don't know that much about frogs. Oh, thank goodness. I've only been the nomen of death a few times and Mothman takes it way too seriously. <laughs> See, I heard Mothman was really nice. You you never know, do you? Some of them are such thefts, thesps. Um, that's hilarious. I've just got images of you on on the roof of a house howling like a banshee. Um, just maybe I will, will listen to seven more episodes tonight because I think that's going to keep me awake. <sighs> we live in quite a rural area and there's a lot of odd noises outside overnight. Uh, we get a lot of foxes, um, uh, and foxes make weird noises, uh, so that's that's probably going to keep me awake. Um, yeah. Would anyone else? Uh, would anyone like to close us off with any comments? Um, I really hate the delay. I really wish there wasn't so much of a delay um, be between streaming software. I mean, even if you stream through directly through um, YouTube, there's a delay. I mean, you know, that's just me being impatient. I need to go out and <laughs> touch the grass a little bit, right? Was he the frogman of Ohio? Because if so, that's a famous catch. Uh, you, you were, if that's the case, you were married to a very famous man that is still being talked about. Um, see, people come here to be educated. They, <laughs> they don't expect it to descend into that. Um So funny. Thank you, Yvonne. To be honest with you, it's it's you all that make it great. I'm just I'm I'm just the one with the camera. You joining in and adding your thoughts in um um, and of course, Auntie Giggles derailing things. Just, you know, it, it's you all that make it. It really is. Um, and I've, I've said it before, I'm nothing without you. Uh, I, I really enjoy doing what I do. I love the research, even, even though it's so much research. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I love being here. I really do. And it, it is you all that make the community. 
um, you know, it's Temp, it's Zayden, it's Gina, it's PC Tech, um, you know, it's the re reality view, uh, reality review um, kind of community, the Gorshas, that have, have, you know, joined me over here. And I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's, it's Ida Think So, it's Yvonne Hates Injustice, Auntie Giggles, Rick, Temp, um, you know, I just, uh, and Stee, obviously, who, again, seems to have disappeared. I'm not seeing his his comments now. Um, you know, all of you make this what it is, and I really appreciate you being here so I can carry on doing it. Um, um, so, you know, again, if you want to support the, the channel, but you don't want to do it, directly you can use use any of the links in any of the descriptions um and go from there to search for whatever it is that that you're looking for on amazon um uh you can you can donate if you wish to um but you can also you know click over and have a look at streamyard click over and have a look at vidIQ um Oh, Steve is still here. Um, you know, there are lots and lots of ways you can support you, you know, likes, sharing the channel with people you think might enjoy it. Um, uh, and little tip, if you want to support any of our YouTube family, so PC Tech, Brickable Hours, uh, PC Tech Radio, I should say, Brickable Hours, Zayden and um, Gorsh Games, um, Gina at Loopy Miracle, uh, Reality Review. Have I missed anyone? Oh yes, a pair of, a couple of dingoes. Um, I should say. Um, if you want to support any of those people, watch their videos all the way through. Help their analytics. So YouTube, when they take. Uh, when when they see what a video is doing, if people are clicking on it and instantly clicking away, they're not going to keep showing it to people. Um, whereas if someone clicks on it and watches it all the way through, their watch time goes up and it means that they, they see that video is really popular um, or successful and they'll start pushing it out to other people. So you can do that. It's completely free. Um, with me, always stick me on two times speed if you're on the replay crew or I should have said this at the beginning, really. Two hour long video. And I say at the end, um, you know, stick me on two times speed. Um, put me in my po in your pocket and listen to me while you're doing other stuff. Uh, but it all really, really helps towards our watch time, um, the average view du duration, all of the things that really help push our channels out there. Um uh auntie giggles makes my day i think steve's flirting with you uh auntie giggles i know you've got a thing with jack but steve's a young lad he's a good looking boy uh i meant boy as in you know the colloquial term rather than child steve is not a child he's legal um uh uh, yes, thank you. Hit that like on the way out. Likes help uh, YouTube creators know that you're enjoying their content. Um, uh, so yes. Um, sorry, who? What am I putting in the in the description? Do you want me to put the channels in the description? Because I will do that quite happily. Um, lots of hearts going up for our amazing community um because they are amazing i love you all i really do i hate signing off it's like saying goodbye to friends and i'm so lonely <laughs> um also i would like to say thank you very much we are now at 80 subscribers in our community which is amazing my my goal uh, is to get to 100 by the end of the year, which would be lovely. Um, and I would like to get to 200 hours watch, watch time this year. 
Uh, only another 42 to go. So <laughs> it takes so long to build up these stats. Um, oh, yes, that is that is a really good idea, Steve, putting the two time speed thing in the description. I might do that. Um, uh, yeah, not everyone knows how to, to do that. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I am going to go now. Um, thank you so much for the fun and the giggles in the chats and Auntie Giggles in the chat. Um, really do appreciate you being here. Uh, I will release another video during the week. Keep an eye on the community tab because I will put up polls and questions and other bits and pieces. So please do um, get involved in that. Again, getting involved in, in the community tab really helps the channel. The more people interact with your community tab, the more likely those are going to pop up on other people's feeds. So do check that out from time to time. Um, I will see you live next Friday. Um, and until then, have a great week. Know that you are loved and you are appreciated. Take care.